and what a competition it was here. Tim uh, won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got 100 right off the bat. Yeah. Got to make the host feel good, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I want everyone to know that I did get 100 as well, but not right off the bat. Is that on videotape or it didn't happen? I, I don't know. His was not, I don't think. Oh, yeah, yours definitely wasn't because you didn't get one. Yeah. Now, the big competition of March Madness for NCAA is over uh, UConn, right? Yep. Is that who won? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the wrong. But we'd, we'd lean on Dane for that. He's oh, the yeah, expert. Absolutely. Okay. Love it. And so you, you guys came up, or which one of you came up with the Him Madness? Him Madness. That's right. Yeah. Are we in round three on that now? Or yeah, we haven't released the results of round two yet, but uh, the three of us know some of them. So. Real na- nail biter. Yeah, a couple of very close. What's the uh, the gist on that? How does that all work? It's just matching up people's like historically, you know, popular favorite hymns, and we're we're gonna run them down to like a final four, and starting with sixty four, down to thirty two, down mm-hmm. to sixteen. Some of them produce some uh, tough choices because there's a lot of good songs out there. Now, as uh, an organist, I did do some voting. I gotta say, there was some leaning towards the classics. But not all. Mm. I'm not going to reveal, yeah. though. Yeah. It's important to keep your secrets. Your vote is your vote. Now, with basketball over, him madness going. Dane, on our first podcast, you said, I'd like to talk some yeah. twins, Vikings. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you're a little more into the Vikings and you're more into the twins. It would appear that way, wouldn't it? Or was that just a free sweatshirt uh, that you got as a premium? <laughs> I think it actually was a free sweatshirt. <laughs> Depends on the season, though. I think we both like them. Okay, so favorite sport to watch, not necessarily play. I would say football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, football. Yeah. Football. Likewise, but I'm a very casual fan. I have here, this is a Gallup poll just from February. Football is the favorite sport to watch mm-hmm. in yeah. America, according to that poll. Now, second and third are very close to call. In February, baseball came in second. Hmm. Interesting. Basketball. Basketball. Other one? Yeah. But on some other polls, it's the other way around. So they're very neck and neck. Yeah. Everyone hates hockey. Yeah. Ice hockey was number five. Five. Yeah. Soccer right. at four. Soccer. Yeah. Hockey. Auto racing. Figure skating. Sport. Tennis. Golf. I didn't think golf was a sport. I thought it was just a hobby. Yeah, maybe, but definitely not NASCAR. You know, That's Dane yeah, at VingyLutheran.com. <laughs> <laughs> Who here has never set foot inside Target Field? Tim, we got to take you. We're going to film one of these from Target Field now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say, we're going to take away your Minnesota card that you have not been. (laughs) Now, I sang the national anthem for some Twins games back in the old, in the Metrodome. I heard about that back when you were good, that they let you do things like that. (laughs) Well, this is the, 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 oh, a friend of mine uh, owned a DQ, and on the DQ night, they would ask owners, hey, you got anybody who could sing the anthem? Mm. Apparently, he's the only one who ever volunteered. Uh, so we sang a quartet three or four times. That's Pretty cool. exciting. Younger adults are roughly twice as likely as older adults to name basketball as their favorite sport. Hmm. Think that tracks? I believe that. Yeah, I feel like we got a lot of like middle high school kids around here that love basketball. Older adults, 65 plus, I'm not there yet. You just prevented the joke that was coming, right? <laughs> I'll start that over. <laughs> Older adults prefer baseball. Like you? <laughs> and that, uh, who doesn't have a grandma that loves yeah. watching baseball? My mom is basketball. She's a basketball fan? If I call and she's watching the game, I have to call back. Timberwolves? Or? Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. She loves her Timberwolves. Oh, yeah. Suppose the Twins and the Timberwolves would play each other at their respective sports in a game. Huh. Who do you think would play better? Twins at basketball or Timberwolves at baseball? I'm going to go Twins would look more competent in basketball. Where yeah. I'm pretty sure every Timberwolf would strike out once they faced a 100-mile-an-hour heater. Right. Mm. I saw something about this recently. It's like crazy where like you have less than a second at that major league level to make a decision when that ball is coming at you if you're going to swing or not. And like that is hard. Yep. Like, Here's your example. Michael Jordan. How would baseball work out for him? Oh. 
How did it work out for him? I, know, <laughs> I, I remember okay. that he did. You know who Michael Jordan sports. is? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about that speed at which it comes. I don't think a basketball player is hitting that. Right. I, I could agree. never handle that. I did some T ball as a wee child. Uh huh. And then I did a little bit of uh, track, but that was just to get out of a paper route that I was tired of. Yeah. See, I can't do a paper route. I, I'm going out for track. Yeah. But it turns out I was a pretty good sprinter. Well, that's good. That was where the speed came in. Mm-hmm. I think they, I mean, Major League Baseball, too, like, what's the statistics? Like, Hall of Fame, you know, is a 300 hitter. Uh, and so, like, you're failing 70% of the time, like. It's, I think it's really, really hard, and I think those baseball players make it look easy. I told you in our first episode, these guys can make a lesson out of anything. <laughs> I think so. Hall yeah. of Fame baseball players fail 70% of the time, and yet look how successful they are ultimately. Yeah, yeah. I fail more than 70% <laughs> of the time. <laughs> Let's take another here. Uh, Vikings playing basketball against the Timberwolves versus Timberwolves playing football against the Vikings. Man, football's tough because you get all kinds of, like, different styles of athletes. Like, you got, like, the big, strong linemen and then, like, the tall, fast receivers. Mm -hmm. I, I assume yeah. maybe just because of the diversity of their athletic gifts that I bet the Vikings would play better basketball than the Timberwolves would play football. That's tough. Different skill set, again. Yeah. I might have to do a coin flip on that one. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go with yeah. Vikings yeah. playing basketball just to... Because I can... Uh, like, Justin Jefferson's going to look good on a basketball yeah. court. But, like, He'll hop who's, out of the who's playing O-line for the the Wolves? Like, Good point. I don't Maybe know. Maybe Carl Anthony Towns. He's a big Anthony guy. Anthony Edwards. You just name the two players that you know. Name a third. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> no, Call Tim's mom. She's going to help you out yeah. on this one. Don't, watch <laughs> don't, don't you hurt my Timberwolves, she'd say. <laughs> Well, this podcast has become so popular in its very first episode that I'm sure that the Twins and the Vikings and the Timberwolves will all see this and say, hey, we need to do that. That's right. And yeah. let's invite these three clowns yeah. to come and, and moderate. I'll interview them. <laughs> yeah. What if we switch roles? I have to preach. <laughs> and you have oh, to... Oh, gosh. It, well, let's not even say play the organ. Just you need to lead the, the singing. Uh, well, which one of Justin, us? <laughs> I I don't think he would lead the singing. No, too well. no. I mean, I could handle leading the singing. Yeah, not playing the organ. Nope. I'm like the Timberwolves in this. I've got one thing that I can do halfway decent, and I can't transition to anything else. I feel like I could come up with a kids sermon. I think you'd win that. Yeah, yeah. those are the hard ones, though. If you ever need any I help, I could with play that. heart and soul on the <laughs> organ, and it would sound pretty good. Welcome to service, everybody. <laughs> da, 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 da. Preaching today, Tim Burns. So I gotta tell you, when we were playing a little uh, skee ball back here, uh, I was a, a little shocked at the level of competition that was happening between you guys. Real question here: Is competitiveness and unchristian like behavior is there anything written on that i don't think so i would say like i think competitiveness drives us to be better and so um there's always a little edge uh, like justin and i like to be competitive with each other but i think there's something about like he just preached a really good sermon I want to do as well as that mm -hmm. next time or better. Mm -hmm. See if I can top that. And then I hope that he thinks the same thing. You hope that I think that you yeah. preach a really yeah. good sermon, right? Yeah. That's what you yeah. hope. <laughs> or, or we hope that he thinks that competition is okay. Yeah. I think, like, we've been talking a lot at church lately about, like, grace and forgiveness and not having to be perfect people. And I think, like, one of the great things uh, about our faith is that that value of forgiveness and mercy and grace that makes questions like this in some ways like just fun things for friends to talk about mm -hmm. but like I don't have to lose sleep at night worrying about like is my competitiveness which is certainly there is that a terrible sin that God will smite me for because that's not how God works and so yeah, I mean, it's good to stop, I think, and evaluate your life and see, like, does this competitive drive hurt other people? But I don't think it's, you know, there's these things that we do don't get to the point where God is so offended that, you know, God develops this deep anger for us. So I think there's a level at which it crosses the line, right? Like sure. If I 
am so competitive that I have to be right and you're wrong. Like, there's something missed there. Mm -hmm. uh, or if he's about to throw a, a ball here on the skee ball machine and then you like shove him or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> or I don't know if, if you bang him on the wrist with some sort of stick. Right. And he, he says, why? Why? Right. Have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might take it to a... Sure, when you start to harm, harm or hurt other people, right? Right. Yeah. If competition propels each competitor to do their best, which reminds me of that the mm -hmm. track story when I was running in track when I was not the jock, mm -hmm. if you can imagine. Yeah. You know, I, can't, I can't imagine that. Yeah. Tim's in the marching band and playing the organ and in plays. Well, we had an, an invitational in, in here on South Dakota, mm -hmm. and we're setting up a relay, right? So all the jocks are taken inside, number three, number five burns you on the outside, because I guess that's psychologically worse, right? Yeah, I think so. Well, that kind of ticked me off. Yeah. So when the gun fired, yeah. I smoked it. Yeah, I smoked I them. <laughs> I beat my entire team out of anger, I guess. Is that wrong? I don't think so. Frustration. Yeah, no, that's just good motivation. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, one of my favorite things with sports is these guys can go head to head and be pounding on each other for the whole game. And right after the game, if they're in the right mindset, they go shake hands yeah. and trade jerseys. And it's like, war while we're out there in the game but we can still be friends outside and you know on a very different level i know Justin and i are both competitive i come from a family that's competitive when the game's over we still come back to the table and care about each other and mm -hmm. that's i uh, witnessed that at the the super bowl it actually made me a little weepy i'm like all oh, these guys are just like hugging and talking like we're pals off the field and right. yeah i thought that was pretty cool too mm -hmm. I'm going to put the graphic back up of the favorite sports here. And this goes all the way down through boxing, wrestling, track and field, fishing, swimming, motocross, and rodeo. What kind of wrestling? Like professional wrestling? MMA. Oh, professional oh, wait. wrestling's better. No, we had MMA and wrestling. So, what, like Greco-Roman? We got no. Olympics this summer? Yeah. Talking about, like, Rick The Flair. Rock. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Jumping off the ropes, kind of. That's right. Okay. Delivering Justin the rock bottom. Loves his soap operas for men. So. <laughs> the, uh, which athletes, so in what sport, do you think are most likely to be good churchgoers? Hmm. Oh, boy. Maybe we should do a bracket. <laughs> Football <laughs> or baseball? <laughs> I would say rodeo. Rodeo? They have I've rodeo been to some churches, rodeos. right? Have you yeah. been to rodeo church? Or? Uh, no, I haven't been to rodeo church, but I've been to rodeos where they pray before uh -huh. each... Uh, is that What's a rodeo match? What is it? It's not a game. It's not a... Rodeo. Rodeo. It's just... It's a rodeo. Yeah. yeah. Performance? Yeah. Yeah. No thing defines rodeo. No. Rodeo it defines, defines itself. Yeah. I'm it gonna, defines the things. My, my call is on rodeo for the most church-like... I have a, a short answer to that. I was a huge Lakers fan growing up, uh, and this new show came out on HBO, Showtime, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. And they winning showed, Time? Winning Time, yeah, you're right. It's winning a great time. show. Yeah. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a major character, and he's a Muslim, but he uh, really brings his faith into what he does. He says it's more than just a game. And he's trying to coach Magic Johnson as a rookie. Like, we are more than this. We need to live our lives in such a way that other people are inspired. And um, so there is one of your heroes, like, seeing it as much more than basketball. Mm -hmm. And some of the values of his faith that play out on the court and in teamwork in the locker room. Yeah. And I suppose, like any walk of life, there are going to be some who are auto mechanics yeah. who are very church going yeah. and some who aren't yeah yeah um are you thinking uh i've been thinking about dane and i have both used this in different lessons here but there's like this couple years back uh it was the packers versus the seahawks when russell oh, wilson yeah. was with the seahawks still and aaron Rodgers was the packers and like russell wilson and the the seahawks won the game and he goes in like you know 
after the game interviews talking about like it's because of god that we won and you know god controlled the game there's the control from last episode theme right like, we're gonna weave every it's gonna get harder as we get yeah <laughs> deeper into the <laughs> every podcast. episode comes together like a puzzle uh and aaron Rodgers was kind of like that's crap like god doesn't god care about, about football, football games like god has bigger things to be concerned about and you know, so we've, you know, presented it as kind of like a debate, like, you know, where are you on this spectrum? Uh, you know, people of faith disagree on all kinds of different things. So where are you on this spectrum of does God care so much about football games that God's going to get involved? Uh, or God. one particular team, I've commented on that before. Oh, we prayed, the, the Lord was with us this game and we won. I'm like, well, does the Lord just hate the other team? <laughs> or what do you say when you lose in spectacular fashion? Was yeah. that God making you throw those six interceptions? <laughs> right, yeah, maybe. So, maybe. Right. We should test it. I say we get back to the skee-ball machine. We both got hundreds. I don't... Yeah, so you pray before Slow this next steady. one. Yeah. Yeah. We are clearly the yeah. more favored ones <laughs> in the fair. eyes of the Lord. You need to repent, Dane. God yeah. works through suffering. Don't let the competition get to the point of hurting anybody. But uh, do, just like our first one, we got some pretty good mileage out of that, but people sharing it and commenting. Yeah, thank and, you. And they love the, the conversation. When you comment, and especially when you do a heart it uh, ups the algorithms a little bit to you, get this in front of more people. If they did angry, would that up the algorithm too? Maybe. I think it's about passion, Okay. whether yeah. it's love or anger. Angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Passion gets us views. Beyond the pulpit. Alter. Beyond, you hate the, you hated the word al- pulpit or alter. It's a gross word. Pulpit's a gross word. So it's beyond the... Beyond the altar. Alter. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Beyond the Altar. Catch it on Facebook and on YouTube. Like it. Subscribe to it, and we'll see you again next time. Let's go. You're going right. down. Dan. No way.